own testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. The good news is this, the three services of last Sunday, plus the special prayer session for the people who have a health challenge, was an awesome moment in God's presence. God opened the eyes of two blind people last Sunday during that prayer session in the temple to God's glory. Not only that, after Sunday service, one of us here haven't had the testimony of that girl who had a child that got healed. And I also said, remember in that service, in second or third service, I can't remember, I said, you have terminal ailment, raise up your hand. And I said, okay, put your hand, and we prayed. And afterward, I said, go and do your test. This guy went to do his test. He had, he had HIV. And went to do his test. And according to the testimony he sent to me on my phone, he said, they said that um, if he doesn't take that medication one day, he's going to die. According to what they told him. He stopped med medication on Sunday, which I didn't say stop medication. But he said he believed. And he stopped it. And according to him, he went. By Monday to do his test. By the time he got the test, it was HIV negative. That's the result. HIV negative. That is not by man's power. HIV positive negative in one week. Two. With two positive became negative in one week. It's not manipulation. If you don't believe, you can't believe God again. If you don't believe by now, you can't be, there's no way you can go again that you can be blessed. Because these are not manipulations. These are medical reports. It's not as if I manipulated it. I don't know them. Please believe. Look at this brother's testimony. It's amazing. What have been rejected and negated for eight years happened in three days. Believe, Dumel. If you don't believe, you can't enjoy the grace that God is you know, unleashing your direction. I've never taken any of those testimonies for granted because they are not normal. They are supernatural. Only God can turn HIV positive to negative because it's incurable. He can only manage it. He cannot erase it. Only God can erase what cannot be managed. And tonight, this morning, as many one person that desire this kind of testimony, yours shall be delivered in Jesus' name. We're engaging the supernatural power of love has been a teaching series. And um, part three, before we go to this session of enough is enough. And in the course of the service, whatever you have listed, like we sent the message through the WhatsApp, I'm sure some of us got it. Yeah. That we should list out the things that must be enough. Because you see, don't take any instruction for granted. List what now? Can't I say with my mouth? Don't trouble me. Okay. It's fine. If that guy didn't go to do the test and say, Well, I will try, the HIV will remain. Jesus said, Go to Siloam and wash. Must I go to Siloam? Please get me pure water. Let me wash my eyes. Simple instruction. Must I go to Siloam? Give me well water there. Must I go to Dafa? Simple obedience is what compels God's intervention. Simple obedience. Simple. Go to Siloam. He said, go, he told Naman, go to Jordan and wash. Ah, Jordan. I have swimming pool at my back now. I'm a general in the army. Where should I go to that dirty water? Go to Jordan and wash. And not only once, seven times. <laughs> if you don't learn to obey God, you are not set to enjoy God. If you don't learn to obey God, you are not set to enjoy God. If you don't learn to obey God, don't expect to enjoy God. Only those who obey God can ever enjoy God. God is so sweet, but with obedience. God is so sweet, but with, not without obedience. List out the things that you want God to put an end to. Someone may be saying, this pastor's trouble is too much. What is the matter now? Must I list it? After all, I can say it and God will hear me. Please, I beg, I will say it. Simple obedience. Engage 
Imagine the supernatural power of love. Part three. When we are committed to pursuing the lost to the point of establishment in the faith, we are brought into supernatural favor with God. Remember? Engaging supernatural of love talks about loving what God loves. Why? God is supernatural. God is supernatural. God is supernatural. So if you must prove that you are in love with God, you must love what God loves. And what God loves is souls. And that's why I said, when we are committed to pursuing the lost to the point of establishment, pursuing the lost to the point, not just pursuing, but to the point of establishment, you're sowing a, I mean, you're sowing a seed, especially to the ground. You don't just sow and leave. You sow and return. Check. You water. Not only that, you, if you need be, you fertilize. As you fertilize, you go again, you weed. As you weed, you, you keep manuring, nurturing until the seed is properly planted. If the seed is not planted, it don't expect harvest. Many of us, we don't try to see souls planted. We only try to invite people and that's why we don't see results. Nobody's been paid for effort made. You're only being paid for result gotten. You don't get A in your results in school, in your exams, because you wrote plenty sheets. In school days, I have friends that say, more sheets, more papers, more papers, and you'll be saying, what have I written to your long? More sheets, more papers. Say, ah, what is this? And you'll be sweating to write just one page. They've written five pages. And they say, more sheets, more sheets. You'll be wondering, ah, but what is it not the same question? Am I wrong? But they may fail because it's not a number of sheets. It is having the results. Effort made is not being paid. Result gotten is what is being given results. I mean, testimonies or proofs or excellence. If it's not in result, it does not have a proof that you have done anything good. You invite people to church is not as good as the person is established in the kingdom. John chapter 15 verse 16. We know the scripture, but may the scripture find full expression in our lives. It says that ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have ordained you. That's why you see this ordination process is not as important as the one you embrace the one God ordained first. Whether they ordain you as deacon or deaconess or not, it's not as important. Like I was telling some of our people yesterday, you see, if you have been ordained and nothing has changed, you're a failure. They pour all on your head and there's no new engagement. Nothing changed in your commitment to God. You wasted the grace. So if you are now saying, I must be ordained, I must be ordained, ask yourself, am I ready to do the service of ordination? What will change by the time I start this, you know, I am enlisted in this new process. I have ordained you. Ordination is not for watching. Ordination is not for sitting. Ordination is not for talking. Not for backbiting. Ordination is for going. He said, I have ordained you that you should go. That you should go. That you should go. When we call for, you know, evangelism, how many, those, how many of the ordained workers come to church for evangelism together? Let's ask ourselves. Operation Andrew Evangelism Outreach is a general one. Which everybody is expected to be in church. And we announced every third Saturday. Let's ask ourselves. Yes, some might be busy. But will you be busy for 12 months? I like us to understand that God is a God of standard. Ordination is not for you to sit down. Ordination is for you to go out. I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. If nobody comes to church, who would the usher usher? If nobody is in church, what is the job of CCU when there is no crowd? That you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should abide 
Abide means to be established. Abide means to be planted. Abide means to become a disciple that will go out to bring other, 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 other members, other people. And um, I like us to understand, we're not wasting our time serving God. Psalm 102 verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. For thy servant take a pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Thou shalt arise and have mercy on, upon Zion for the time to favor her. Your time of service is your time of favor. Your time of service is your time of favor. When you are opportuned to serve, that is your opportunity to be favored. Every time you undergo, you are enlisted for divine favor. Hmm. Every time you undergo, there is a favor that accompanies servants. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time for has come, yet the come for thy servant. That is the premise in logic. That is the premise behind the favor. If you are not a servant, you are not to be favored. For those servant take a pleasure in a stones and favor the dust thereof. You will favor me because I'm your servant. You this brother said he had in church. Don't be a bench age. This is not bench again. Don't be a chairwoman. Be serving in the house of God. He started serving. God changed his story. Hey, why are you wasting your time? Why not start serving? He took the same in two weeks that he started doing um, sanctuary. God changed his story. He's been coming for four service, four service alone and going home. But now he had the teaching. That's why doing the word is what caused, is what will compare God to doing the wonders. Doing the word. This man shall be blessed in all his deeds. It is when you do. When you do. Don't just hear the word. Don't just hear the word. Do. He did it and he saw it. In less than a month. That he started sanctuary. Eight years of affliction. Became a past tense. For thy servant take a pleasure. He came to sweep the church. God swept away the shame. He came to sweep the church. God swept away the fear. He came to sweep the church. God did what no man can do for him. Saints, you may have money at times and you still be in problem. <laughs> it's not money. You may have money and still be mourning. It's not everybody that has money that is enjoying. Many have money, but money cannot solve their problem. But your service will commit God to change your story. Your service will commit God. I mean genuine service. Not high service. Not service because pastor is coming. Not service because you want a deacon. You want a title. A service that you know that God recognizes. A service that God himself approves. Not a service that man is approving. That God himself has approved. Glory to God. And it takes love to serve. If you don't love God, you can't serve God. It takes the love of God to serve God. And what the benefits? He says, Luke 22, verse 35. He said, When I sent you without pause or script, he said, Lucky anything. And the answer, We lack nothing. We lack nothing. Nothing. Which means when you start serving, He will start serving you. And when God is the one servicing you, nothing will be lacking. Because he's the source, the Bible says, Thou that openest thy hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. I will praise my God. He is the performer of all things. So when you start serving God, all things become your portion. The Bible says, Come and serve because all things are ready. With God, all is available. But serve the God of all, you have all you desire. Serve the God of all, you have all that you ever desire. Glory to God. May the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. However, I'd like us to know that love is a covenant channel through which the supernatural flows. As you, start, as you continue to love God, the supernatural will keep flowing. 
The supernatural will keep flowing. I didn't touch this brother that had HIV on Sunday. I only said, put your hand on your head. You have terminal. Okay, terminal amen. Raise up your hand. And he did. I didn't touch him. Jesus touched him. Jesus touched him. Jesus touched him wherever he was standing. Even till now, I don't know him by face. I don't, only, I don't know him by face. I don't need to know him. Jesus is the one that needs to know him. Jesus is the one that needs to know him because when you are in love with God, the supernatural flows through your hand. Be in love. The supernatural will flow. For example, Jesus' compassion cleansed the lepers and delivered them from satanic assault. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 39. And he preached in their synagogues and throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou canst make me clean. And just moved with compassion. I had this understanding some years back that compassion means compelled passion. That is, you are compelled to be passionate. You have no choice than just say, ah, I can't. I must. Jesus moved with com compassion and put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. When love is released, power is released. When you release the God kind of love, God's kind of power follows. Compassion comes with power from above. Compassion will always release divine unction. Divine unction. Especially when the love is of God and is genuine. Or genuine, like some people say. When the love is authentic, not fake. When the love is approved of heaven. This morning the Lord will baptize us afresh with the spirit of love. Say a louder amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Say a consecrated amen. amen. Addicted lovers of God are commanders of the supernatural. Addicted lovers of God. Addicted lovers of God are the commanders of the supernaturals. They are always commanders of the supernatural. Why? Because when you are in love, you are in touch with God. When you are in love, there's a connecting force between you and God. When you are in love, you are no more in the realm of men. You are in the class of God. When you are in love, everything works together for your good. Not because you want, to, you want it, it must. Be in love with God. Acts chapter 4, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Paul said, Who shall separate us from the love of God? Love of Christ, shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are killed means, I'm dying for the sake of love. I'm frustrated. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, he said, I, Paul, I die daily. Die daily means, I'm in love for God. And, um, sold out for God. And, um, verse 37 of Romans 8, he said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love of God. Can separate us. Ask yourself, is it your wife that is taking you from God? Is it your husband? Like I told some of our people yesterday, I said, Saints, if you love your wife more than God, it's a risky love. I know it's too hard, but it's the truth. You are quiet. Good. If you love your husband more than God, it's a risky love. It's very risky. Very, very risky. Because the truth is this. God is the reason why your life, wife is breathing. God is the reason why your husband is breathing. No, my wife, oh, my wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. As if God is not the reason why you have a wife. Ah, my children, my children, my children. As if God is not the one that gave you the children. Yes, the Bible says an unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. It must be balanced, but nevertheless, understand what is right. What shall separate us from love God? Is it my career? 
I must be a doctor. So I'm not going to church again. Who gave you brain? No, 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 no. I must use my PhD. Who is the reason why you have the, the admission? Many have good results. They are being rejected. Supervisors reject them. Nonsense. Please, don't ever misplace the place of God. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, let God's place remain as a standard. Glory to God. Who shall separate us from love of God? Addicted lovers. Look at our father, Bishop Wedebo. He, he keeps telling us, I love my wife, but she knows I love God more than her. Let's follow those who have through, patience, through faith and patience obtained the promise. Let's follow them. I'm not saying we should not love our family members, but love God more than them. When you love God more than them, the love of God will protect them. When you love God more than them, the love of God will preserve them. The love of God will, pro will provide for them. The love of God will supply for them because they now become God's body. No more your body. You are carrying the body, family body on your head. That's why you are sinking. Transfer it to God. Carry the love of God. Embrace his love. You enjoy his hand. Embrace his love. You enjoy his hand. Stop struggling. You see, my, my chest could fit. You see, my this. How will I pay tax now? Because this is, this, is, this, is, this is Why not just do what they say you should do? Do what God wants first. And watch if God will not daze you with surprises. From this morning, we are baptized afresh Amen. with the spirit of love. Amen. With the spirit of love. Amen. For the supernatural in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. The Paul's, I mean, the Paul, I mean, Paul the Apostle saying this, look at what became of him. Acts chapter 14 verse 9. The same mad Paul speak, who steadily beholding him and perceiving that he had failed to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted their voices, saying, in the speech of Lyconia, the God had come down to us in likeness of men. Paul, a human being, in the same verse, became Paul, a God. Lovers are gods in picture. Lovers are being seen as God. God's lovers are God to situations. God's lovers, I mean genuine God lovers, that is those who are in love with God, they become a God to situations. They call his name Paul, but by the time they saw the love of God at work in him, remember, it was love that compelled him to pray for, the, for that man to rise. When they saw the love, they saw God. When you are in love, you are with God. When you are in love, you are in God. And when you are in love, you command what God can command. May we receive grace to operate in love in the name of Jesus. Amen. And this morning service, I'd like you to expect that whatever you brought in here as a challenge will be turned to a testimony. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. Say a stronger amen. amen. If you have anything that you are, you know, you want God to terminate, and to put an end to. Please drop it on the floor. The same grace at work in Canaan land. The same grace at work here. I don't have my own grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is upon us all. And that grace will speak for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you have written this morning. That enough is enough. Shall indeed be enough in the name of Jesus Christ. Saints. God does not respect people. He respects your faith. He respects your conviction in the word. He res he, we went to one place after the youth program yesterday. Myself and a few of us, we went to Ecolis area to go and generate an eruption. You know, we just stormed the place because one of us had gone, had gone there ahead of time and God gave him that direction. We stormed the place and said, and we got there. They were all wearing uniform. You know now, I said, ah, what's going on here? This elderly person in school, they now told me that, okay, June 16th, they wear uniform. Ah, uniform for what? If you see people wearing uniform, people that are already 35, 40, wearing school uniform. Now, the point now is this, as they were coming out, they were coming out with cigarettes, with whatever, whatever. But Jesus still healed them. 
That's what I'm driving at. Jesus still healed them in the state of sin. Merciful God. As I was praying with them, I was, okay, I was, it was grace that helped me. The smell coming out, both smoke and cigarette and every and the beer. But they have no choice. I have to face it. But Jesus healed them in the state of their sin. For God so loved the world. What I'm saying is this. They believe in Jesus in their sin. And he still saved them. One of them, one woman like that, fat woman like that, she has been having pain for five years on her thighs. And after my privilege, I prayed for her to the glory of God. The pain is, she was so surprised. Said, ah, ah, it's gone. By the time we turn back, coming to church, coming back to church, she came to meet us again. She said, please, please, come and carry us tomorrow. Please. She was pr practically begging that please come and carry us to church tomorrow. That was the first time I was seeing her. She believed in a person she has never seen. She believed in Jesus that probably has, never, I mean, I mean, has not been preached to her the way she had it yesterday. And five years, she was even saying five years, five years, pain left on the spot. Please believe in what you have written that that's the last day you write it. You will never write it again. Because it has turned to a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. First Chronicles. Chapter 4. Verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. The Bible says that and Jabez, please follow me closely by the grace of God. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That is a statement of envy. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Where you are is not where God has planned you to be. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez. Because I bear him with sorrow. Please follow closely. Jabez was more honorable. Remember the Bible says, The thought I have for you is a thought of good. Not of evil. Evil is sorrow. So if you see sorrow around you, it is not the plan of God. Jeremiah 9, 11. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He was born for honor, not for shame. Say amen. You were born for greatness, not for pity and poverty. But circumstances could have changed God's plan. Circumstances could have you know, manipulated God's intention. Circumstances could have, you know, changed it the way God didn't plan it. But verse 10 now says, even though I've been, so, I've been called sorrow for years, but Jabez called on the God of Israel and saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me in Bless me indeed. Because when God blesses, He erases curses. Every blessing of God will always erase every curse of life. Because blessing and curses cannot stay together. It's not possible. It's just like you are trying to mix darkness and light. They are immiscible, they are not liquids, immiscible components. <laughs> they can't join. You know in chemistry, it's what they call immiscible liquids. They can't mix. One will always float on the other. Darkness and light cannot stay. In the same way, curses and blessings, they are immiscible. They can't stay together. One will either go for the other to stay. He said, if thou wouldest bless me, that is, remove this curse. Because I know when you bless, I am blessed. He said, whatever I bless shall be blessed. And whoever I curse is cursed. Genesis 12, verse 3 to 4. 
And the Bible says that, he said, if thou wouldest bless me, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 10, he said, if thou wouldest bless me and change my story and give me a new name and wipe away this shame, if thou wouldest bless me, God, he said to bless you today. Say amen. Yeah. And enlarge my cause that thy hand might be with me, that thy wouldest keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me, and God granted him which he requested. You have presented your request on the floor. We are following scriptures. If thou and Mark 1, verse 35, um, that Mark 1 that we read, Mark 1, verse 39, the leper said, verse 40. If thou will, that can make me clean. And just said, I will. Jesus is willing to erase this shame. Jesus is willing to remove this curse. Jesus is willing to remove this stagnation. He said, if thou will. That's the same way Jabez said. And Mark 13, 37 says, what I said to one, I said to all. So if Jesus said to that leper, I will. <laughs> if Jesus said to that, I will. Which means he said to you, I will. Remove that shame. I will remove that reproach. I will remove that stagnation. I will remove that barrenness. Say a big amen. We are following scriptures. What I said to one, I said to all. What I said to one, I said to all. What I said to one, I said to all. Whatever you see in scriptures is your portion. Whatever you see, as men that received him, if you receive it and you believe it, you become it. If you receive it, John 1 12, as men that received him, then the gay power becomes sons of God. Even those that believe on his name. So if you receive it, that Lord, you said what you said to one, you said to all. And you told the leper, I will claim you. Leprosy is like shame. Leprosy is disgusting. Leprosy is like rejection. Hatred. You are not wanted. You are being hated. It's like a stench. Something that irritates. No, lepers are always at the outskirts. They don't stay in the city because they are not needed. They are not wanted. Nobody wants to side them. Leprosorium are always far from the city. Whatever has been making you to be rejected, whatever has made you to become a rejection, by the power and authority in the name, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, they are turning to testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jabez cried unto God. This morning, until you cry, remember the Bible says that when I cry, then the Lord will hear me. This morning, you will cry to God. Enough is enough to every form of shame. Enough is enough. Last week's service was healing banquet. People took their healing on the spot. Remember, okay, during second service, God spoke by privilege. I had my spirit man that somebody's here, you are urinating blood. And I said, You are here urinating blood. As you pray right now, go to the toilet, check it out. Go to the ladies or gents, check it out. Your blood urination, immaturia is over. During the service, I think during second service, the lady came out and said, Yes, I was the one. I went to do the, I went to urinate and blood dried up on the spot, not later. On the spot, she came and received her healing. That guy came. Remember, the heart problem, the testimony. He said, I came last week, I had a heart problem. And in the service, God healed me. Today's service is your own day in the name of Jesus. Today is your day in the name of Jesus Christ. Every day is God's day. The day you choose is your own day. Every day is God's day. Every day is God's day. Every day is God's day. The day you choose to be. Look at it. The brother said this week. He called the agent this week. This week, my permit must be out. He called the agent this week. I'm not waiting again. No more delay. This week. Say today. Say today. An end is coming to every shame. Say today. An end is coming. Now, close.
close your eyes and say today, speak whatever you want to bring to an end. An end, an end, an end. Say it. An end. Say it quickly. Say it. God is hearing you. Areko shaka raba raga daba ragata. If you are watching online, say the same thing. An end. An end. Podaka ragataza. E paragaraliza. She prakata praketo prakata kata. I prakate kraki. Davis cried and the Lord had. Davis cried and the Lord had. Rasketo parakata laria la saka ragata laria. Are you sure you're praying? Cry to your God. Ni libi bruri shibi bi bruri. I ge 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 beria. Bakaraka takata. What you don't want, you don't watch. Today, an end, an end, an end. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Say a better amen. amen. Say a stronger amen. amen. Say a stronger amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Say a confident amen. amen. Every challenge of life has an expiry date. Every challenge of life has an expiry date. Like I was saying humorously with some of, I mean, some people, someone beside me some time ago, I said, everything in South, South Africa has expiry dates. If you buy tomato, it has expiry dates. I don't know the kind of tomato it is. If you buy tomato in Nigeria, it, it can't expire. For where? Even after it has rotten, they still blend it. They say it's better. But it is our own country here. Everything, if, if you buy corn, he says, I expire it. I'm scared. Anything in this place, even water, expire it. <laughs> in some countries, nothing expires. If water is expired, what? You even have it to thank God. He says, expire. <laughs> now, in the same way, everything that they call a challenge just expire it. And the date is the day you choose. The day you choose for it to expire is the day God would retire it. The day you choose for that challenge to expire is the day that God will retire it. God can retire problems. Okay, go now because you have expired. So you choose the day. John chapter 7 verse 37. The Bible says that Jesus Christ stood on the mount and said, if anyone tests it, the day, I mean, the last day, the great of the feast, Jesus cried, if anyone tests it, let him come to the waters and drink. So the day you choose is the day God will deliver the testimony. Today is your own day. Yeah. Say a louder amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. But we have expired days in scriptures. I will just mention one. I will go to the anointing session. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 For our light affliction which is but for a moment say a moment, moment. work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory our light affliction so there is no affliction you are going through that is heavy even scriptures call it our light affliction which is but for a moment a moment simply means a second. A moment. In a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. A moment is being defined in scriptures. Twinkling of an eye. As you blink. As you blink. Which means God is set to turn that written item to a testimony in a moment. In a moment. In a moment. In a moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, that is suddenly, before you remember that you wrote anything, God has turned into a testimony. Before you remember that something is bothering you, it has changed your testimony. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. This brother's permit issue could have been solved eight years ago. But it didn't happen until eight years after by God's intervention now hear this does it mean that God is stronger now than before get it right does it mean that God was not strong eight years ago 
That is where we should understand that we determine our testimony. God of eight years ago is he the God of now. God will not be stronger than he is today, tomorrow. God's strength is perfect. God's strength does not dwindle. God's strength is not soon so down. God's strength is not up and down. God is God. He's not higher. God is God. You, you, there's no comparison to God's power. No, it's God, God's power is higher. We can only use that in a statement. But by truth, God is God. No comparison. He's not greater. He's God. There's, you can't compare. No place for comparison. In the same way, there's no argument to your testimony. Because when you choose to believe, is uh, is as good as he has done it. Hear this. Jesus will not die the second time. The death and the resurrection of Jesus marked the end of God's operation on earth. Please understand that. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ marked the, opera- the end of the operation of God on earth. Because when Jesus died, he said, it is finished. It is finished. The only thing that remains is your faith. It is finished. So, when, whenever you release faith, you have what you desire. Your faith is your currency to your desires. If you believe now, you get it now. If you believe it now, you get it now, not later. If you believe it now, you get it now. If you believe you get it now. That man said this week, he caught the agent this week. What kind of man being are you? This week. The day you choose to believe is the day you receive. This morning, an end is coming to every frustration. An end is coming to every frustration. An end is coming to every frustration. In the name of Jesus Christ. That stubborn disease will disappear today. That stubborn affliction will disappear today. That embarrassing situation will turn to testimony today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That turmoil in your family is over. Every trace of stroke in your life is over. Every attack on your family is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. But mind you, nothing new will happen if there's no new action. Nothing new will happen if there's no new action. Remember, like we all know, I mean, someone was no Newton law, third law of motion. To every action, there's equal and opposite reaction. If you don't initiate a force, you can't see a move. If you don't initiate a force, and that's the reason why the anointing session is important. There are some prayers, there are some challenges that will not respect your prayer, but they can't reject the power of God. There are some, that's why it's important to understand. The Bible says that it shall come to pass in that day that the yoke shall be lifted off thy neck. Isaiah 10, 27. And the yoke of the shoulder and that same yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. See, because. Now, because simply means that if you don't put that cause, it won't change. It may not change because of a prayer. It may not change because of anything, but because of the anointing. The anointing will always destroy the afflictor. The anointing will always destroy the oppressor. The anointing, because what is in the anointing? Let's ask ourselves. What is in the anointing? First Samuel chapter 16 verse 13, the Bible says, And Samuel took the vial of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren. And as he was pouring the oil, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. So in the oil is a spirit. And who is the spirit of the Lord? Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2. Darkness was over the face of the deep. Everything was void and empty. Darkness was everywhere. And the spirit of God moved. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. When the spirit moves, darkness must bow. When the spirit moves, and the Lord said, when the spirit arrives, darkness must depart. 
It is not a prayer point. It is a must. The spirit moved. And the spirit moved. Everything was standstill. Everything remained the way it was. And the spirit moved. When the spirit moved, darkness said, ah, I can't stay again. That's why this morning we shall be engaging the efficacy of the anointing of the Holy Ghost for the termination of every oppression in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you don't want again today, they are going forever. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. When God says it is over, no man can stand on the road. When God says, listen to me, He says that. God has spoken once, twice about the power of God. Who is it that speaketh and cometh to pass? When the Almighty God has not spoken, when God speaks, everything bows. Lamentation 3.37 I'd like you to know this morning that whatever you have written in that paper is turning to a testimony on the spot. In the name of Jesus Christ! In the name of Jesus Christ! A moment. A moment. A moment. When the spirit moved, God spoke and light appeared. So we'll be following that process this morning. Whatever you have written in the paper, you know, you pick it on the floor when I say you should do so by the grace of God. And we'll be calling it as this darkness. Then light will put anointing on them and expect them to go forever. Say a stronger amen. Say a better amen.